Well, welcome to the Pro Brick exclusive YouTube channel. You're with Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. I no longer practice as a minister or reverend. Um, the call went off my life and I accepted that and gave it away to do other stuff. Um, the scripture for today is, Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. Very interesting passage, and we'll come back to that for now. I want to turn to Anthony Hopkins. Um, he's going to share with us something. Believe me one thing. I've read someone, I can't remember if it was in the Old Testament, or I think it was a shaman, maybe Carlos Castaneda, but the shaman said there was a drought. Cattle were dying, people were dying in a desert. And the shaman said, build the ditches. Dig the ditches for the rain. And they said, there is no rain. Dig the ditches and the rain will come. Now you non-believers may say, oh, that's nonsense. Well, believe what you want. That's the rational mind. I don't think the rational mind is working too well at the moment. It's the irrational mind, the subconscious. All my life, when I was a little boy, I dreamed of where I am now. I may have had a vision, I don't know. Didn't have much hope, but everything happened for me. And now I believe that we can condense time. We can pull it to ourselves. It's not about the future. Oh, I'm gonna do something next year. It doesn't exist. Tomorrow doesn't exist. The next hour does not exist. It's all potential. But what we can do is drag the time into the present, now, into the solar plexus of our soul. Build the ditches. Whatever you want to do, believe it, believe it, believe it, even if you don't believe. Play the game of belief. Act as if you believe. That is power. That is sheer power. And it will happen, believe you me. From an old fool like me, it's worked in my life, it will work in yours. So never give up. Believe, believe, believe. I don't care if you're atheist or agnostic or anything. Believe, believe, believe. As I have. Mr. Sir Anthony Hopkins. And I want to talk a little bit on the subject of female nature. She walked right into the rat trap. Now, what does this mean and how is it relevant? Well, it's very relevant, viewers, because right now at this stage in time, 50% of men are not dating. Um, they don't want to deal with women. They are not interested in what women are doing or what's going to happen and I've had extensive experience most of my life's been spent in the company of a partner or a love interest or marriage or something of that nature and what I've learned is if something isn't going right in a relationship and unresolved is not being sought you can watch very carefully and think very carefully and find out exactly where this person's heart is at. You can walk with that person and watch them go right into what I'm, I call the rap trap. Now, <clears throat> you might be dealing with somebody and the relationship appears to be going good on the surface and everybody's plodding along and then you'll start to see some small characteristic changes some habits that are coming in that shouldn't be you know that are there that we were once moving away from and now falling back into um, you put out a little bit of a signal seeking for resolve some kind of resolve or at least maintenance as to turning back from any more descent into what possibly could be unattractive behavior or habits and what you'll find is if there's traces of unresolve already in the mix um, be it through fear or fearful avoidance or it's something that's too close to family um, or some other reason friendship reason or possibly another love interest or there's a hundred million ways in which people won't resolve and unresolved is the beginning of the end 
it always is because unless things are sorted out somebody's going to go down most affairs are a result of some kind of resentment caused through an insult an offense or some kind of unresolved and now we'll turn to the script now we'll turn to the scriptures to study the nature of woman genesis chapter 3 hey guys if you haven't already um what's happening there hang on a sec oh we've got problems there we go um if you haven't already subscribe to the channel <laughs> Um, and also, just a message for the. No, we can't. It's not, oh, yeah, there we go. For the mummy's boys. I'm sick of you calling me a mummy's boy. Well, it might be time to cut the umbilical cord, mightn't it? I'm sick of you calling me a mummy's boy. A lot of missuses get the shits with these blokes. But anyway. The serpent, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 was the shrewdest of all wild animals the Lord God had made. Wild. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say to you that you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Now there's a big lead up to this, which I teach in other passages or other lessons, where leading up to this, the Lord is referred to as the Lord God. As soon as man and woman is comes into the picture, it goes from God to the Lord God. And if you're watching this, you need to pay close attention because this is the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. There's tremendous power in the name of the Lord God, addressing the Lord as Lord God. Lord God, Lord God, all the way all the way right lord god and then what happens the serpent turns up the serpents and the lord god but then when the ser serpent speaks <coughs> what does he say he undermines god did god really say you must not eat of the notice what didn't he do he took the majesty the deity away from god undermined who he is just gently and this is what a lot of men do to women's husbands and this is what a lot of women do to their husbands they take away the the sanctity the specialness the the deity of that person the authority the whole thing's undermined as soon as you undermine a person's name now the woman said, of course we, now this is where she went wrong. Why didn't she say, I'm sorry, but you'll have to address my husband. Can somebody answer me that, please? Why didn't she say, I'm sorry, um, but you'll have to address my husband. Now this is a key into female nature. When a strange bloke comes up to the girl, and she's got a little bit of resentment or some kind of issue, or maybe it's just the right moment at the right time. Instead of entertaining the gestures and undermining tactics and seductive tactics of man, <clears throat> why didn't she say, you might have to address my husband about that? And of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, she should never have entertained the serpent. And as soon as a woman engages a serpent, a stranger, right, they're in trouble. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. Now, what you'll find is a lot of these women today that have children, they'll split their relationship between the, de the children and the boyfriend. <clears throat> now, especially if they're, say, young adults. Well, you've got to realise these people will want to try and live out their... There's some very strange tribes out there, right? Let me just say that. 
and they want to try and live out their emotional part of their life as close to their children as they can and they go outside of their home to find men or a man that they can have six consist consistent sex with then they go back home to carry on their life with their children and this is called emotional enmeshment emotional incest see if they move into the realm of having sex with their children which does happen in some cases then they're in all sorts of trouble but why didn't she say please address my husband and so she says it's the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we may not we're not allowed to eat now and this is the funny part this is the part that's really funny because she said god said you must not eat it or even touch it and she exaggerates God never said you couldn't touch it. He just said you can't eat it. So she's bought straight and she's, she's going down. Or if you do, you'll die. See, the exaggeration is a sign of weakness. It's playing into the plot, the seduction of the devil. And this would have undermined her character in a way in which she was not going to be able to stand against this and this is how men seduce women once you've got them in any of these characteristics like lying a little bit um, undermining a little straight away the seduction is winning now you won't die the serpent replied to the woman immediate he won't leave you right God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like him, knowing both good and evil. Now the thing here is, guys, they're already like him. This is how ridiculous this is. They were made in his image and likeness. Okay? Your husband will not mind if I sleep with you. I'm better than him. Nothing will happen to you. You'll feel like me. You'll be like God. And what happens? Remember, there's no Lord God here. And she didn't say Lord God either. So she was gone at that point. As soon as she took the name of the Lord God away and just went back to God, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Proverbs 18, you'll find it in there. <clears throat> The woman was convinced. Didn't take much, did it? It didn't take much, I said, did it? It didn't take much, did it? I said it didn't take much. Are you following? It was very easy, wasn't it? And that's how easy it is to seduce women. It's so much easier than you think i'm not suggesting that anybody go out and do that that's not the object of this lesson the object of this lesson is to show you that female nature will walk them right into the rat trap now when you're doubtful about a woman in your relationship you can watch very carefully how this happens to them i had a few of these instances where um, the, they've tried to change some things and initially started off okay only to find themselves back where they started and you have to be aware of this as a man otherwise you're going to end up damaged hurt broken left wondering and all the rest of it because of what women can do now I don't suggest that you should attach to any woman. I don't suggest that. I think you should enjoy her and love her and serve, um, treat her well and, you know, serve her and her serve you. Probably more of the latter of her. But I don't think you should attach. 
I don't think you should put yourself in a position where she's going to take you down. Now, the key to this story is she didn't take Adam down. And I'm not going to go into that right now. Because he deliberately ate, it says in Timothy, that the woman was deceived, but the man deliberately ate. And this is where, when breakups happen, men will follow through. They'll follow through with their commitment. And just to cut a long story short, when he deliberately ate, when he fought, when he sacrificed himself and deliberately ate, um, that was going to the cross, like Christ went to the cross as it were. <clears throat> he gave up all his splendor and glory. See, let me just come back to this passage. She saw that the tree was beautiful. This is how you'll, their mind will work once temptations conceive. She saw that the man was attractive and that what he was going to do looked delicious. What he was going to do to her looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. And this is the part where she was deceived because there is no wisdom in immoral behavior. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Now this is the key. She ate and she fell. The man hasn't eaten yet. There's a massive time period between when she ate and he ate. She'd fallen. She's gone all on her own. Um, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So we're fallen, but Christ hadn't fallen. He made his way to the cross and took our sin upon himself. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, when Adam ate, there's two things that could have possibly happened. And I need you to, really need you to listen to this. Number one, he was an idiot. Or number two, he was a type of Christ, as it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 14, part B. Look up Romans chapter 5, verse 14, part B or C, where it says he was a type of Christ. When Adam ate, he ate because he loved her and he became like her. And God said, I can use that. I can use that to send my son. I'm going to punish you and all just like I'm going to punish him. But I can use that act of love to send my son, my, the Messiah, when I'm ready, to fix all this up. And what it actually is, is God sending himself in the form of a man to be punished by us and crucified to pay for what happened here. You realise that, don't you? And this here just shows you how females walk right into the rat trap of life. This is why we females fall easier than men. Now let me give you an example. <clears throat> when you're unsure about a woman, you just say yes. You can put down your rules. Don't do this, don't do that. Someone will come along and persuade her friends, children, another man, confidants, unless she's some kind of special, solid woman that ain't going to let you go anywhere. She's going to really love you. And there's not many of them left. Some children, some women can't even get past their children to love a man the way that she should. Most of them actually today, if you're outside, you, you know, the relationship you've had with the children of your mother of your children. And you can go along and support these people. And the easier you make it for them, the more cheese you feed them, the closer they're going to get to the mouse trap. Either way, the mouse trap's always there with the with the bait on it. It's ready to snap. But if you can see what's coming, 
if you can see something's going down, something's just not right, or you've been disrespected, you shut the trap. All privilege is gone if no, no resolve can be found because she's off with the devil. That female nature is going to walk her right into the rat trap and guess who she's going to take with her? You. It's too simple, isn't it? It's, it seems all too simple to understand. But it's 100% right. Why won't this work? There it is. Hey, <clears throat> if he suggests popping around to see his mother again tonight, I'm off. Women are sick of mummy's boys. Okay, you've got to have your wits about you. You've got to be aware of what's going on. Okay. I'm sick of you calling me a mummy's boy. There's more of these guys out there than you realise. They're everywhere. So guys, that's a little bit of in, insight into how a woman can go down. If you want to study that yourself, you can. Um, there's all sorts of resources on the internet. Our passage today was, Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. But those who love their children care enough to discipline them correctly. Female nature, she walked right into the rat trap. I've seen this. I just had one do it with the children. She didn't even know. Um, and before we go, guys, uh, what's happening there? Now we don't need that. What happened to the subscribe one? Disappeared. Okay. Well, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, the Probrick exclusive YouTube channel. You're with Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist. We just talked about the rat trap, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.